up for it, find it, make it your own. It's the Get Thrifty Podcast. Welcome to the show. You have discovered the Get Thrifty Podcast brought to you by ARC Thrift Stores right here in colorful Colorado. ARC Thrift Stores is a Colorado thrift store chain. And if you're in Colorado or visiting us, please check out one of our 33 Front Range and Western Slope locations. You will not be disappointed. I am your host, Maggie Savick, and we are all about sharing everything that has to do with shopping secondhand. If you're a person who's part of our unique thrift culture and you'd like to be on this show, please contact us. We would love to promote your businesses and share your social channels and your stories and advice with our listeners. You can find us on Instagram at ArcThrift. Send us a DM and let's chat. Ladies and gentlemen, so excited. We've got an East Coast galley in the house. Please welcome Tony Lynn to the show. Tony Lynn is a Pennsylvania-based reseller. Her IG vintage shop is called the Retro Space Cat in honor of her two totally nutso sweetheart cats. Love it that you know they're nuts. Originally from North Carolina, her love of vintage came from her mom's antique hunting stories of her childhood and Tony Lynn's Nana, thrifty shopping sensibilities. Oh, we have so many questions about the legacy that is Tony. Tony is actually an elementary school art teacher full time, as well as a mom to a four year old. Life stays very v- busy as a result. And in her free time, she has and she works on some light home renovations, which we definitely want to ask about because on my deep dive, I fell in love with her wallpaper. She's obsessed with anything from the 60s and 70s and Garfield, and she works hard to make her home as groovy and colorful as possible. Tony, thanks for joining us today. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited because, well, first of all, the name of your whole shop and everything is just so cute. So let's start with your Instagram handle and and places where people can find as they listen. Sure. So Instagram right now is the only place that I that you can find me as far as vintage goes. Um, yeah. So it's the ret- the retro space cat. No spaces. No no dots. Nothing. Just straight <laughs> the retro space cat on Instagram. All right. Give us the origin. How'd you come up with this? Obviously you are a cat person. So I have two cats, Luna and Buggy. They are nuts. Um, So actually when I started this account, I was just going to show some of my home renovation and um, it's always been a dream of mine to sell vintage and it kind of snowballed last year. Um, I already have so much that could have been inventory anyway. So once that got started, um, the reason for the name of my shop, though, is that uh, it just popped into my head. My favorite era is, you know, 60s, 70s, space age, space race, all that stuff. Um, So retro I knew I wanted it to say retro. I knew I wanted it to have the cats in it. And it just kind of popped in my head, retro space cat. Um, I had thought about retro space cat house. And now I'm glad that I just stuck with retro space cat because it's morphed into a completely different thing on my account. So not limiting yourself based. So if you'd use the word house, it would have only been home items. Now it's turned into something much bigger. Yeah, I would have had to change it or yeah, like I'm glad that I kept it a little more broad. Smart move. All right. Well, let's talk about your DNA, how you got into this. Obviously, this is kind of a legacy. Give us a little background on how you found thrifting and vintage. Sure. I've always been, like I said, I've always been really into 60s and 70s. And I think that might come from listening to my mom's stories. She grew up in in the 60s and 70s and Um, My grandparents had this epic, like split level ranch, super seventies, like the shag carpet, all the, like, it's like they renovated, I think in the early seventies. And then they actually never ended up (laughs) updating (laughs) that. (laughs) They passed away with all of that stuff still there. Um, But I just remembered it, it's such a cozy feeling. We would go play in her basement, me and my cousin. So I've come from a big Italian family. And if anybody talks to me, you know, for like 10 minutes, it ends up coming up somehow. So <laughs> get that out of the way. Mm-hmm. But uh, we'd go down to the basement and play and there's this bright orange shag carpet and 
gorgeous, like floral orange couch. And it just was so, so it, now it's even nostalgic for me. She had a, my grandma had a whole little studio filled with, um, clay, a uh, hobbyist piece. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, I don't have, I, you know what? I don't know if she made, I have some food dogs from her, but I don't know that she glazed those. Um, yeah. So we would do that. She would let us like paint the little hobbyist pieces and she had a little kiln in there. Um, so that is a huge part of, I think what at least introduced me to that era. Mm -hmm. I would say right now my house is definitely leaning toward that style that was in their home, at least um, in that one space where we would hang out most. Um, My mom though has always been a very uh, go-getter, I would say. So like I'm two years old, walking Canal Street in New York City, because I actually was born in New Jersey, um, not to add another state to everything. but <laughs> <laughs> No, add them all, add them all. <laughs> yeah. So she sold jewelry, jewelry wholesale. So we would be on Canal Street and going into shops and getting jewelry. And I would pick out these little barrettes. And this would be in the 80s. Then I was I was born in 84. And um. Yeah. And she would just host just on her own. It wasn't like through anything. She just would host these jewelry parties and, oh, wow. <laughs> you know, um, yeah. And then later antiquing and, and things of that nature. So. All right. So you're definitely from the East coast and then, so raised, where were you raised? North Carolina, North Carolina. Okay. You had another state. So did you ever do any of this like vintage and antiquing and shopping like that in North Carolina? Yes, that's more where I was introduced to the antiquing side. My mom collected um, great uh, depression glass. Oh, wow. Okay. She now, is that them. one of the things you sell as well or not really? I have. It's not predominantly what my focus is. I've kind of, well, we can talk about that too at, um, in a bit, but yeah, I've narrowed my focus to more uh, as I found what I felt matched my own vibe for lack of a better <laughs> yeah totally um yeah okay so, so parts of her collection but I'm keeping it okay yeah some of that stuff has to stay in the family you've got to pass it down to your kiddos and their kiddos um so what inspired the business what really launched this I mean obviously you live in this very creative world of your own making but elementary school art is definitely a place of just utter creativity what why the business yeah absolutely I I love that aspect of it and um so it was actually my goal for retirement to like do yeah <laughs> sling antiques and vintage um that was like a, a pipe dream like maybe one day I'll have a booth or you know go to all these little um markets but as I was you know falling down all the rabbit holes of Instagram, I realized, I think it was Marion I found first, which I know you've interviewed her. Oh, Midmod Marion, our girl. She yeah, gets a shout out on like almost every I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was the very first one. And I was like, what is she doing? What is, mm-hmm. a, what is this live? What is she doing? And I just had no idea that was a thing. Well, I already know Instagram. So that's easy to pick up on. Um, and I just started digging in, diving deeper, meeting more people, figuring it out. It was like a really good challenge for me to figure out this side of starting something up, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. I mean, it, has it changed your world to kind of meet these people and, and find this? It absolutely has. Oh absolutely. yeah. Talk about that. Oh my God. The community is incredible. And I know, you know, you always, there's always, you know, ups and downs within a community. And I feel like the people, like there's a group of women uh, resellers that we have a group chat and we talk all day, every day. Wow. That's so cool. I can't even remember when we started, but maybe last summer and that alone um, and the support just it's now transformed into being like support for like life as well yeah you know we can ask 
all kinds of questions, pricing questions, you know, tell me more about this kind of item. I've, I've found this, but I don't know, you know, um, should we pick this thing up? You know, that kind of thing. Um, that is incredible to me, but even just, um, just making friends and being able to support other shops has been really game changing to me. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I'm a mom, my kid is about to be four and I teach. And for the most part, my life is wake up, be a mom, (laughs) go to work end work, be a mom, (laughs) you know? So yeah, it's for, for that's one aspect of why it's been so life-changing for me, I guess, is this isn't for me, at least like an easy route to go as far as hot, like I wouldn't necessarily call it a hobby anymore, but you know, as far as something for me. I love it. I mean, that kind of thing can change your life. And I, I love one of these quotes from you and in, in my show notes, it says how vintage sourcing helped me find myself again. Talk yeah. about that. That's, that's a really yeah. powerful thing to say. It is. And you know, I, I, it is a really big deal to me, actually. So I started the shop about a year ago, almost exactly. Um, so like I had said, when I was growing up and especially like in college, I was thrifting all the time. I was like searching for mostly clothes at that time and mm-hmm. and the different eras I was into. But then I had a really long period of like loss and grieving maybe a decade's worth. (laughs) Um, And parts of it had to do with just uh, um, aspects of my childhood that were not as positive. And so I felt like I had kind of lost who I was. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't really know even what I liked anymore, if that makes sense. So... Once I started doing, and it, it, I know that it kind of sounds silly, but it, it's not, it's like very true to my now, what I, I would say is my legacy that I'm developing. <clears throat> you know, once I had my, my kid, she's incredible. She was like, it was like waking up to spring from this long winter. Um, but as I started sourcing, you know, when you start, selling you get excited I'm sure lots of people have this <laughs> have this uh experience but once you start selling you kind of buy everything <laughs> so I'm I still have lots of things that like do not represent me or my shop at all but I got it a year ago um and then as you go you find all of these things that you had no idea it would like spark so much joy for you. Mm-hmm. And I can give you my favorite example. It's one of the fa- my favorite things that I own. Like, I, yes, I have some gorgeous class. Yes, whatever. But one of my favorite things I own is a Garfield phone. I <laughs> love that. It's right next to your beautiful cabinet that I have to ask about. Yes, <laughs> it's hanging out in my kitchen. It, I... I mean, I did really love Garfield when I was probably like eight, nine, but I had no idea that that like walking into my kitchen, seeing that phone would make me feel so happy. Wow. You know, I wouldn't have thought before, honestly, like if you look at my feed now and you look at my house now, it's, it looks this way because I've come back to this part of myself that is bright and I'm like allowing myself to recognize these things about me that have always been there, but just kind of went very by the wayside for a long long time. Cause before all of this, I would, I would have said that I liked more minimal and I liked kind of more neutral colors. (laughs) I mean, it's not that way. anymore, (laughs) And that is not actually what I liked. It's kind of like what I felt I should, should do, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
like denying your true self. Oh, kids can yeah. totally do that for us too, where they, you know, right. wake yeah, us up a- and you want to like share those beautiful things from your childhood with her, you know? She's a big part of that. Yeah. I painted our dining room this gorgeous modern pink color because I was like, it's going to be her playroom. I'll do it for her. We can always paint over it. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you, every time I walked down, our, walked down our stairs in the morning, seeing that pink, I will not be changing it. It is so amazing. Joy. Yes. So joyful. Yes. Yes. It's I mean, amazing. I love that. I think that's such a, a great message for our listeners too, is like, this is a really fun world and, you know, don't deny yourself these pleasures. And if you yeah. see it at a thrift store, pick it up. Why not? Why yep, not? Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, I have a note here too about sourcing and research tips did that all kind of come naturally to you to kind of get to know these different niche items that you've got and that you're selling to tell us a little bit more about how you research and source? Yeah. So I think it's maybe 50, 50. I think it did come somewhat naturally, but like I said, I was a little more well-versed in depression era glass um, and very specific, like, I could tell you obviously anything about Garfield because I I liked him as a kid, but uh, as you go along and find things, yes, I have used others as resources and I use Google lens quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'll open that up in a shop and just kind of see, like, I think this is what I think it is, but whether it's for me or for selling, it's just like, you know, I think this is a thing, but I don't know what it is. And then you go dive deeper into a rabbit hole. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, there's, there's been a few things like that. There's actually a vase that I have. That's like, I guess I paid a dollar 99 for it. And, um, I guess it's, it could be in a museum. <laughs> it's like a big deal. Oh, I love that. I fell down a deep rabbit hole. What is that. it? Tell us. It's right above me. It, oh gosh, I'm not going to remember. What's it called? I need to double check. Oh, I love it. This is a first. Someone need to stand on their couch to pull down a vase. That's the podcast <laughs> that we are on. Oh, ladies and gentlemen. You can see it. It's this. Oh, it's lava, cool. Um, it's a lava uh, glaze. Oh my goodness. So it's from the seventies and you know what? I knew I should have looked, I should have looked. And up. you bought this at a thrift store? Yeah. For $1.99. Wow. Like a lot. It has a repair, like the neck had been broken at some point, but it's hard to tell. But I just, I was going to resell it. And then I thought it was one of those things I looked at it and I said, this just looks like something. It definitely looks seventies. It's not necessarily my style, but let me look it up real quick. It looks important. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't even see the pricing at first as much um, as when I dove deeper, but yeah, it was like, it says made in Italy on the bottom. And you know what? Of course I can't off the top. I can't read the name and I can't remember. I, I knew this would happen because- um yeah I've, I, I have a very bad memory <laughs> <laughs> but those kinds of finds are really what this podcast is all about oh and fun yeah and so what specifically can you kind of give us an idea of what the the sorts of you know rabbit holes that you sell on your page yeah sure I have narrowed it down into more groovy more retro a little bit of 80s so like nostalgic pieces um, you know, characters from then. that's on my list, BTW, because yeah. I saw uh, your rainbow by bright post. Tell me that you have gem in the holograms as well. Do you remember that show? I do remember that show. I don't have that any show. gem actually. I oh. do have a lot of rainbow bright. I have yes. um, care, some care bears, some, uh, well, I had ET and my kid is afraid of it. So <laughs> she, was really, she was actually really afraid of it. So I, so, gave it away <laughs> I'm a so huge ET well. person I've got three in my office love ET I tried so hard too I was like look at this adorable video Stop. that yeah. and she would not have it no way it was too so, creepy yeah so at first actually for a little while last year I think one of the reasons I started gaining a little bit of a following was because I was going into the into thrift stores I wasn't really finding anything all that great but I was finding these hobbyist pieces where like they clearly didn't understand how to paint eyelids on them and they just (laughs) 
terrified or or scandalized. So I did this whole reel of um, Betty Ann, Charlotte and Betty Ann. And it was these two, like, I guess they're ornaments. I've sold them since, but um, just these two ladies, they look like two little church ladies and their eyes are just like wide open and they're having a, I had a conversation. I did a voiceover conversation. <laughs> I did all these like weird quirky things in the beginning. And it was so fun because it was a space where like, at that time, nobody I knew was following me. I could just kind of explore my, what I was, what I like, what I think is funny. And I was just surprised at how being authentic in that way really drew Mm -hmm. people to me. Um, especially the friendships that I now have, Mm -hmm. you know, I I'll forget about it. And some of them will be like, Oh, remember, (laughs) you know, Charlotte and Betty Ann is when I knew I loved Tony. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my gosh, I forgot about them. But yeah, I mean, you can, they're a, di- they're a dime a dozen. You can go to any thrift store and find these hobbyist pieces that look like scandalized. They just look like they have seen something, <laughs> been through something. And uh, <laughs> so that's kind of where it started. And then, you know what? I lost your original question. So I apologize, but. No, I love this because it's something goes back to the marketing, which this podcast always turns into something about marketing and being truly authentic and sharing this hilarious story of two little characters that look scandalized. What a great way to describe it to our listeners because they can't see these people, obviously. But I just think that is a beautiful thing to be able to, you know, get people excited about you and start following you and then to bring it up a year later. How long have you been doing this? I have been selling on Instagram for a year. Almost amazing. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's been really fun. It kind of snowballed on its own. Um, I mean, obviously I was posting and doing um, original content and, you know, kind of funny little bits that I would think of. It's a creative outlet for me. Oh, yeah. Like I am an artist. I can paint. I do photography. But that all to me involves so much work and so much solitude which is great and I like but this is so such a good community to be a Mm -hmm. part of so like this has just been such a more fun outlet for me than that um yeah so I feel like I can't get back to that question I can't recall what it was but I think it was important but no I think we (laughs) answered it and who knows what it was what about the live sales so you do live sales with people or alone Talk about kind of your process and your schedule for that. Yeah, sure. I do live sales. Right now I've taken a little bit of a break from live sales just because uh, life is a little nutty. But yes, I do live sales. I have tailored it a little bit more to be more regular people that I'll go live with or people Mm -hmm. that... um, yeah, but I was going live quite a bit in the beginning to it does help get followers. So if you are reselling, I think that is super helpful. Um, and obviously you can sell items and it's a way to connect with your customers and and share audience. your personality. But what great advice too, that if life does get busy, that is the beauty of this. You can take a break exactly. if you need to. I can do a story sale or I can post on my feed to sell something. Yeah. Absolutely. That's great. And um, I have three things. So Garfield, I am obsessed with Pookie. Pookie was the name of my cat in college. I love Garfield's little teddy bear Pookie. So I, when I immediately, that was the first thing I was drawn to was your Garfield stuff. So I love it. I think you never need to let go of that. Hold on to that. Oh yeah. Um, And then I've got to ask more, you know, you use this term pop art and I don't think it's, it's a little, again, another rabbit hole that, um, I don't think we've talked about it on this podcast, so I want you to educate us about this. And I, those gummy bears that you bought, talk, talk about pop art, what it is sure. and some of your pieces, because they're way cool. Ah, awesome. So the gummy bears are not vintage. There's a maker that made those. Um, they're still it, awesome. They're yeah, beautiful. They're, they're incredible. <laughs> they look uh, like real gummy bears. Oh my gosh. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. That was my Christmas present to myself. Um, pop art to me. So that's one of my favorite art movements because of how fun it is and there and because of the focus on creating so pop art originally is like 
uh, you know, we see these things every day, but why can't it be in a museum? You know, why can't it be art? So like with Warhol, for example, mm -hmm. who is a favorite of mine, um, you know, I used to look at it and think, okay, you know, what is the deal? And then walking into an actual show with his work, it just kind of clicked this idea of, you know, we being in a, at that time, being in a, a more stuffy, you know, art world, uh, especially in New York City, which I'm always obsessed with New York City, anything New York, um, you know, taking that <laughs> and doing something so completely opposite mm -hmm. and finding inspiration in the day to day. And there's some quote, and I wish I remembered it, but like about finding just finding beauty in like mundane things mm -hmm. and that is something I feel like I do take through my my life and you know pop art not all of it but a lot of it is very brightly colored and very fun and happy and I see I like I'm looking around now and I'm like oh my gosh almost everything like right now I'm in a big kick of like ceramic foods so I also oh, for your bananas. I loved your banana I was book. I just going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm like, I laugh about it all the time because, of course, I follow so many people who have this gorgeous class, like swung vases mm -hmm. and decanters. And I tell you what, I saw, I knew those bananas were coming. There are these ceramic banana bookends. I think they're vintage Target. They're not even, so cool. I don't even know. Cause I, I did like, look it up. I didn't care. As soon as that hit her feed, I was like, to have them. It, give it to me. I need it. I need it. I yes. think it really is a growing trend. I'm seeing more pop art and I think it's, we're trying to stay ahead of these things. These things are becoming more important and I'm seeing more of them on lives. It's coming. Yeah. You're, you're ahead of your time. Yes, yes, yes. Oh my gosh. Except I'm not going to be selling it. You know, I'm not going to be able to let go of anything, of course not. but I've got these giant jacks, like the toys. Um, I've got yeah, anything that's like a kind of an exaggerated size mm -hmm. of something every day. Um, there's there's this vase that I really want that's like a soda can, um, ceramic, that kind of thing. Yeah. Where it's, it's just so fun to me. Yeah. It's just a cool another rabbit hole, guys. If you're interested, check it out. There's some fun stuff. But I think you do a great job of showing off those kinds of things. I, I'm digging your wallpaper, which we're definitely going to get into. Um, but let's talk about Pennsylvania. Let's talk about your hometown, where you go. Let's put some things on our thrift map. Where should we be shopping if we're, you know, setting up our summer sourcing trips? Sure. So I live in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. It's a little, it's pretty sad. Central. It's about four hours east of Pittsburgh, but it's about two hours west of Philly. So I kind of go all over to thrift, but my favorite, so there's a, a local, I think it's local. I don't know if it's local to Pennsylvania as a whole. I think so. Yeah. It's called Community Aid. And that is, those are my favorites. Community personal. Aid, A-I-D, like, it, like mm -hmm. a Band-Aid. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And um, they always have, to me, they always have the best stuff, but there is a goodwill that's like uh, always right on the way, you know, there's always a thrift store on the way to everywhere. Of you course, go. you have to hit and several like, or you're you wasting your day. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I've run in for, and usually they have nothing. I'm going to be frank with you. <laughs> like, yeah. I usually find absolutely nothing there. That is where Betty and Charlotte or Betty Ann and Charlotte were. But, uh, but there was a 10 minute lunch break. I ran in once and found Blendo. And I was Ooh. just like, wait a second. I mean, I literally, <laughs> I don't have any time for lunch basically. So I just was like, you know what? It's right here. I'm going to run literally speed walk. <laughs> and of course, spot it from a mile away, grab it. Um, yeah, so they do have some good Goodwills, but I would say to me, my favorite is Community Aid. There are a couple of like smaller church thrifts. Mm -hmm. um, really, you know what I like to do though, is to drive kind of out to the middle of nowhere and see, and I'll look up antiques or look up vintage mm -hmm. on Google Maps. And I like going to antique shops in the middle of nowhere. 
Amish uh, country out there, right? Yeah, and like nobody <laughs> really is goes. I I found Catherine Holm there for five dollars once. Wow, yeah, yeah, that's incredible. Great. Okay, People so don't really know as as much maybe what's what is you know. And so somewhere Harrisburg, so between Pittsburgh and and and, uh, Philly. and Philly. Okay, wow. And I assume you've seen the Goldbergs because you know that's pretty much all I know about <laughs> Pennsylvania. I have not seen the. Oh my gosh, put it on your list because okay. the sets are so accurate to those times. You know, you'll yes. if, if nothing else, the aesthetic is great. It's so eighties. It's you know they've got some of those things that we had as children that are just like a Garfield phone. Like you'll see those kinds of things. They do a good job of it. All right. I will watch it. Um, I definitely want to go back to your bookcase because I love it. I have to know, you have this one particular bookcase and I assume the back of it is wallpapered. Is that, okay, give us some, you're into wallpaper. I love it. Where are you finding this? It's so cool. It, it's awesome. Thank you. You know, that actually is a really thick wrapping paper and I think it's spoon flower and I <laughs> got it for something completely different. But I got this shelf and it was just white on the back and it had a yeah. big ugly sticker on it. And, you know, I got that off Marketplace, which is also a, another Facebook Marketplace. Great tool. Place. I just scour constantly. <laughs> um, and yeah, and I had that. I didn't know what to do with, I, you know, it's like the awkward amount of wrapping paper when you like don't have enough to really do anything with. But yeah. Then you have a project. It's really thick and sturdy. So it was nice. Anyway, that's what I used. And I have wallpaper paste because I do actually have wallpaper other places. It just feels like an, I also paint murals. So actually what's behind me right now is, is painted. Oh, wow. Um, but you know, there's only so much time in the day. <laughs> oh yeah. And there's so many cool wallpapers. I mean, I know it really is something I'm really getting more and more into. I'm just seeing more and more of it. People are so creative with it. You do DIY projects, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I do as much as I'm able to without calling a professional. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay. So this is a kind of controversial question, but I have to ask. Yeah. So I see some of your posts. You're slightly activist. You're definitely about helping other women. I love that. Do you feel like Instagram Graham is a safe space to do that? I mean, you guys have really bonded as a community and protected one another, which I totally love. Anything you want to share about what was the drama that kicked this off? I have to know. Which, which, which I know. <laughs> which thing? <laughs> Someone yeah. said something nasty. I mean, do you occasionally get oh, these? About numbers? There's a couple of people that are just like very unkind. Oh, and gosh, so okay. it's, it's not very many. It's just, just very small handful, but you know, they just are very mean. I mean, yeah, the things that I post it, that's just so mean. And for what mm -hmm. it doesn't make sense. Yeah. yeah. I am very outspoken about it. I have not really been on this page as much, um, but every once in a while you, you have know. to, yeah. Um, yeah. And I know one of them that you're probably mentioning is, uh, Brandy mid mod nomad, who's a friend of mine as well. Um, had posted with the swung base dancing with her swung base. Yeah. And so I cute. Yes. Yeah, so cute. And I, and, you know, feel free to censor anything that I say, but, um, you know, I had mentioned, I posted, I, I don't know what it's called because I am old now, but <laughs> spliced it or combined it. However, you know, you got the two next to each other. Um, I did it with like, she had this huge base. So I had this little tiny swung base. So I used the smallest one I could find and danced with mine and made a comment about basically the reason you think that this is vulgar is because of you and your thinking, not because, not because of, of me. Others. Yes. <laughs> Other people are the ones like you are in control of your own thoughts. I, and even if I decided that was what I wanted to do and I wanted to do something quote unquote vulgar or whatnot, it's my, my choice, my page, my body unfollow. Yes. I'll pass. Keep scrolling. I love that Especially you say with, 
yeah scrolling you know i think that that is such a little bright spot and it's like if you're unhappy with what i'm up to just keep scrolling it's yes. life's too short like, it's funny it's it's silly it's funny it's not hurting people so there's no reason and you know i don't mind sharing this i don't know if you want <laughs> this to be part of it or not but i we can up- always cut it out if it's not appropriate yeah. give it to me girl what do you uh, got i okay cool um i grew up <laughs> So I had, I had kind of touched on that when I grew up uh, in like kind of a, uh, had some things go on just growing up. And uh, I grew up evangelical, like very, very borderline cult type evangelical. And um, so that kind of thing, that kind of thinking feeds into a lot of I, I'm recovering from a lot of those mindsets. Sure, sure. And um, so something like somebody holding a swung vase, dancing with it, and someone deciding it's their place to suggest what that means and that it's wrong, right or wrong, is something I usually will not shut up about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and I think that that's the beauty of this community. I love how you guys rally around and protect one another from the weirdos out there that are haters over these kinds of things that is just play and just for fun. Exactly. Um, so, I mean, kudos to you ladies for sticking it out, even though the hate keeps coming. So I think it's a great thing. And I'm, I'm proud to know all of you. And I, you know, I hope that um, even these small little snippets can help you guys just continue to grow your following and grow your businesses because you guys are making thrift the business that I'm in go on from here to eternity. I'm so I guess that's my next question. Are you, um, what's next? Are you going to source other places? Have you ever been to Colorado? Is it on your list? It is on my list. And oh, I good. really, every time I see somebody in an arc thrift store, I'm like, <laughs> and I'm not just blowing smoke. I'm for real. Like I'm like, Oh my gosh, why don't we have ARC thrift stores that right. look so great? That's our goal is further expansion. We're working on it. Oh, awesome. That would be great. Um, yeah, I'm going to keep sourcing. I can't stop myself. So mm-hmm. why not keep selling as well? Yeah. And I have tailored it a little bit more toward what I like. Um, and part of that is if it doesn't sell, it's going to be sitting in my house. So I better like it now. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you know, I will definitely keep doing it. And I, even if it were to slow down, I still think I have that goal of one day when I retire to do it full time. Um, you know, right now I love my job mm-hmm. and uh, I'm not going to leave my job at all. Even if this were to like, you know, get extremely successful um, just because I I enjoy working with kids and with art. But um, I'm very open for the future to evolve with me. Couldn't have said it better. Love it. Love it. All right. Let's talk about your unicorn item. Best thing you've ever found and sold or found and kept. You have that one item. I was trying to think about this and there might be a pause here because I. I... That's right. You think about it. It's so hard to pick just one. <laughs> it is. So I know I have this, I find a lot of brass and I did find this really, what turned out to be a really unique, um, like dinosaur brass piece that was really cute and apparently worth a lot. I, I find it's not even that I want it to be, uh, you know, worth a lot of money. It's just really fun when you find out that it is that yes that's always a joy out. yes so I think unicorn piece for me I mean I love a brass uh dinosaur. that is great that's pretty amazing I, yeah did you resell not, it or did you keep it I did resell it I also have a really amazing pheasant brass pheasant Ooh. with a grass is growing guys I know people are into eyes. it I was, I tried to sell it and nobody was biting for some reason. I think it's supposed to be mine because the <laughs> eyes are very like twiggy, you know, like sixties. Yes. Yes. Lashes. And I'm like, I think it's supposed to stay here. Uh, I like what you just said there. I think it's supposed to be mine guys. Put that 
in your, you know, as you're getting frustrated with something that won't sell, yeah. that's a great thing to tell yourself. It's supposed to be mine. It's a, it's a lot of stuff that's supposed to be mine right now. I think <laughs> a little bit too much, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What about the like unicorn item you want to put out into the world the next time you are shopping at community aid? What are they going to have on the shelf for you? What's it going to be? Gosh, I really want, uh, oh my God. Okay. And I would not sell this, but if I ever find a Gilbert soft light, the mushroom style one, Ooh. um, that I, I need it. That's my, that's my unicorn item right now. And I don't want to really buy it on <laughs> online. I want to find it. You find when- it in the wild, as they say. Yeah. I don't know if I ever will, but even if it's not at community aid, I guess, I don't know, but how amazing. Absolutely. All right. What about people we should be following? Any of your pals online that we need to uh, reach out to? Yes. But my list is so long that I was like, I'm going to email you. Yes, absolutely. (laughs) But give us maybe your top two at least. That's exactly what I was going (laughs) to do. Perfect. So, um, I, think that you guys should fall. There are two accounts that I feel like fall in line with similarly with stuff that I have as well. Um, and one is tofu moth vintage. Oh my God. What a great name. That's also named after her cats actually, but I did not plan to say it. Wow. That's incredible. But she's, she's a little bit of a newer shop and she is in Omaha, Nebraska, and she's just Ooh, we've never oh. had a Nebraska galley, I don't think. Maybe well, I got quite a few Nebraska people. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, she's just very eclectic and unique, and her the stuff she sells is like not stuff I really see. Uh, some of it is, but oh, she's got a lot of really unique, quirky pieces. It's always fun, which I like that it's different than what you see, you know, over and over again. Um, 100%. yeah, and then. One of my friends locally here, uh, Melinda, hers is Mickey and Ralph's. It's M-I-C-K-I-E-A-N-D-R-A-L-P-H-S. Mickey and Ralph's, another clever name. I love that. Yeah, and she's in, she's based in Lancaster, PA. So that's uh, 45 minutes for me-ish. Oh my gosh. There's perfect. so many though. I mean, even just in the chat that I told you about that, I talk to them mm-hmm. every day. There's like 15 of us. And I was like, I don't even know which of you don't <laughs> want to be on a podcast. That's, you know? <laughs> that's a great, that's probably the easier way to go. I mean, exactly. and I love it because I do feel like, I hope that this content gains you followers, you know, when you're able yeah. to share it and, you know, it turns into something good for, for everyone. It really helps the community. So I love it that we can highlight you guys. It's phenomenal, yes. Tony. Phenomenal. Yay. Oh, me too. Me too. Thank you. Absolutely. And I always say that this uh, podcast is dedicated to spreading the good word of thrift. You've definitely done that today. So thanks again for educating us about your site. Once again, tell people how they can find you before I ask about our girl, one Miss Dolly Parton. Yes. Um, You can find me on Instagram. My handle is the retro space cat. All one word, no spaces or anything. Not to be confused with retro cat, which is what I had looked at. Retro <laughs> space cat. Just no, that's not her. It's the retro yes. space cat. Well, Very important. I totally typed it in wrong when I tried to send it as well. And I was like, wait a second. Nope, this is. <laughs> Thank goodness. But we yeah, squared yeah, yeah. it. And now people, when they're listening, they can dual listen and uh, check out your pages and hopefully buy something from you because that's really the ultimate goal. Yes, I have so many good things. So many things. I love it. Well, as we end every podcast, we like to do a shout out to our girl, Dolly Parton. Tony, what do you have to say about our girl? So I do love Dolly Parton. I was thinking of sharing an anecdote of the one time I've ever been to Dollywood. Yes. Is that okay? A hundred percent. Not like a fact about her, but 
I do have a photo somewhere and I need to find it and send it to you. The only time I've been to Dollywood, we had about a two year period uh, growing up as a family where we had an RV and we kind of, <gasps> anytime we could, we would go around. Ooh, and it was I mostly love an easy. RV. Oh, it was, it was amazing. It was so, some of my favorite memories for sure. We ended up in Dollywood, but I had just um, gotten an eye injury. Oh, so, I think I was 12. It was just like I, I scratched my eye. And uh, so I went there with an eye patch on. I'm 12 years old. Most awkward, most awkward stage. And like, it's hot it, in Tennessee. It was hot. Oh. It, was, it was hot. It was miserable. I was so cranky. You know, I'm like preteen. I don't want anybody Angst. to like, yeah. even mm -hmm. look at me. But of course, everybody is because I have an eye patch. It was such a bizarre, so we have just a lot of, so yes, it was fun. I loved going through the little museum there. We ended up getting a piano for some reason. <laughs> like a real piano? <laughs> yes. And it was delivered to our house. And I'm like, did we really do that? Why? Oh my God. That is, Hollywood? What? That right there is amazing. I don't even, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I, yep. <laughs> it's one of those things you think back and you're like, that's not real. Wait. Yeah. That's how random, oh but and you, like, yeah. So we're like, just, you know, uh, all with my eye patch and of course <laughs> just getting completely made fun of. I I'm, it's one of the pictures I wish I wanted so long. I wanted to like burn. And I'm very glad now that I did not because it is just me waiting for the rides there with my eye patch and these terrible glass. It was just very, <laughs> Oh, late 90s. <laughs> but it's the kind of thing that you've got to show your daughter one day. Oh, yeah. I just, for some, for whatever reason, maybe just my odd sense of humor, I just think it makes it so much funnier that it was oh, in yeah. Dollywood. You know, like it could have been anywhere. But oh, yeah. Here, oh, here we it, are chilling at Dollywood with my eye patch and, and it, you'll never forget it now. Attitude. Yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> and the teenage angst, and you went home oh, with the yeah. piano. I mean, uh, this sounds <laughs> know. amazing. Yeah, you know what? I was like, maybe I shouldn't share that. And then I thought, this is the most perfect, accurate, Literally. on brand for me. <laughs> and for this podcast. Let me just oh, tell perfect. you. That okay. goes down in history is one of the top five. I mean, that's pretty oh. amazing. I mean, come on, an eye patch, teenage angst, and a piano. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Be careful. Should... If you send us the picture, though, it's going to end up in our show notes, just so you know. That's okay with me. Yes. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> Tony, you are a delight. And uh, and please, listeners, go check out at the Retro Space Cat check out this site. You won't be disappointed. We're grateful for your time. Anything else you want to share with our listeners before we let you go? Um, <laughs> I don't think so. I think just be true to yourself and enjoy, buy things that you enjoy that you would like to keep in your house. <laughs> great you're advice that you don't want yeah <laughs> perfect tony you're a delight thanks so much for joining us listeners thanks so much for joining and listening to the get thrifty podcast as always we need to remind you please save our pod and leave us a five-star review about how funny creative and smart we are and if you're part of this unique thrift culture and you'd like to join this podcast you can shoot me an email maggie at arcthrift.com or reach out via instagram at arcthrift and now on tiktok at arcthrift thrift stores. Thanks so much. Have a wonderful week. It's the Get Thrifty Podcast. This podcast was powered by Arc Thrift Stores and edited by Avocet Communications.